I taught in Williamsburg, which is a Polish, which was a pretty Polish section of Brooklyn, Brooklyn and a Catholic church, St. Stanislaus. Um, these people would go to two jobs or three jobs a day, but at eight o'clock on Monday and Wednesday, there they were. They had studied, they really wanted to learn English. They really worked hard. I respect people who work hard. I respect people who come here from Latin America. I am for immigrants, and you can put that down in my name with capital letters. This is a nation of immigrants. People come here to work, there's always room for them. Einstein was an immigrant. Christopher Columbus was an immigrant. So I don't, I don't waste time with that, you know, that nonsense, that fear. These people, they were from Poland. They had extraordinarily, di extraordinarily difficult lives in New York City. Um, and they worked like slaves, and they, they always came to class. And I did that for three or four years. It was inspiring to me. It helped me, actually, uh, because I saw, you know, everybody, no one has more, blondes don't have more fun, you know? And everybody has difficulties. How you face those difficulties really is your, that's your, that's your, that's your choice. Tell us a little more about your mother and the influence she had in your life. She had an extraordinarily difficult life, especially early on, as you've written about. Well, my mother was a pretty plain-spoken person. Um, she was born to, she was the daughter of an, Orthodox, of an Orthodox Jewish rabbi. She lived in Suffolk, Virginia. Um, and that was a place that was not friendly to Jewish people at all during the 1930s when she was living there. She met, met and married my father in 1941. Uh, she raised 12 kids and sent them all to college. My, my mother's twice widowed. She was twice widowed. My father died just before I was born, and my stepfather died when I was 14. Um, she never asked people for anything. She was very proud. She worked all the time. She became a Christian, and uh, she, she pretty much was a very religious woman throughout the course of my life knowing her. Um, uh, she, I think she did a very good job, but one of the reasons, one of the things that she really understood was that you have to give people space to change. She understood change because she had changed so much herself, and she understood that change was, was possible uh, and probable if you open your heart and if, you, if you're kind. And so um, I use that in my own life in the sense that I, I think people need People need space to be able to say they made a mistake. People need space to change. And my mother didn't judge people that much. I mean, she did, though. I mean, she was judgmental like any mother. Um, I mean, I would even say that she was probably a little bit racist. I mean, all of us are a little bit. But she, not too much. I mean, my, <laughs> my mother didn't waste too much time with race. I mean, she was just interested in feeding her kids and living a good life and moving toward God's word. But I think if you poke any American deep enough, you'll find some kind of racism and prejudice. In fact, you'll find plenty of it. But my point is that she tried not to judge people. Uh, and so I tried to do that in my own life. I'm inspired by seeing young people do what they do. I suppose teaching. Teaching inspires me. I mean, it's the hardest job. You can do it all you, t at your, you can do it as hard as you can, it's still not enough. Um, and I really don't have time to teach. I mean, I teach on Fridays, but I have to spend Thursdays preparing for Friday, mm -hmm. which means I only have three days to write and research and maybe part of the fourth day. But it inspires me to see these young people um, get better and come into themselves. Um, I'd like to, to, uh, to teach high school someday or at least work with teenagers. I really like teenagers. I respect them. So that inspires me. I don't know if that, uh, I don't know if it inspires other people, but it inspires me.